welcome to Prog Review 25 and in this episode I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I'd take you through a particular favourite box set of mine um, and this is the f famous Charisma box set which was originally released in 1993. For those who don't know, um, Charisma was the home of bands such as Genesis, Lindisfarne, Van de Graaff Generator, Peter Hamill, Steve Hackett and other diverse talents, uh, Vivian Stanshaw, latterly you would have found Malcolm McLaren on there, Barry Humphreys, all sorts of strange eclectic people. The box set, like I said, was released in 1993, uh, comes with its four CDs and I will now make a jump cut and show you what's inside the box. And this is the famous Charisma box. And it covers a period of 1968 to 1985. And it's um, a, quite a remarkable cover there. It's Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, there's Peter Howell at the back, uh, Vivian Stanshaw, Rick Wakeman. Uh, among others. Or is that Clifford T. Ward? I can never tell the difference. And, um, oh, what's this? It's given birth to the Charisma Poser. This was a single disc cut down version of the box set, which includes uh, these tracks, um, as you can see. It's like a little sampler, a little nosegay for anyone who can't afford the whole big box. But I bought this when it was released in 1993. And um, I'm going to show you what makes this what I think were a rather special commemorative box set. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Charisma you know, responsible for a lot of progressive rock. And um, as you can see, this uh, opening page, no, oh, flip back, that's it. I forgot myself there, this opening page cont contains all the all the tracks that are inside the box. I really am not handling the page as well tonight. Sticky fingers, Darren, lick the back of your thumb. Um, oh look, at the court of the Charisma King. Do you see what they've done there? Roy Hollingsworth writes a lovely um, introduction uh, for Tony Stratton Smith. And again, there's another another piece by Gal Coulson. Uh, and some, some of the many letters that were written from the pen of Strat himself. Uh, one of the first bands they dealt with was the, a band called The Nice. If you're not sh familiar with them, that was Keith Emerson's first outfit. Uh, as you can see, here's some lovely pictures of the band. Oh, look, there's a naked bum. I love naked bums, don't you? And uh, let's flick it over again. Uh, these are the VDGD years. And um, as you can see, you know, it's, it's packed full of lovely photographs. Uh, you've got a, a little picture of Hamill's first paperback book in the bottom left hand corner. Um, Tony Stratton Smith was very much involved in sport and also they had a lot of comedy and spoken word on the Charisma label including uh, Barry Humphreys slash Dame Edna Irvidge and um, Sir John Betjeman. A strange combination and haha who doesn't own a Genesis record if you do you'll be very familiar with the Mad Hatter Charisma label um, and um, yeah, I mean, Genesis was very important for the band, and so was this man. It's some bloke called Peter Gabriel. I think he uh, I think he used to carry the bags of Phil Collins or something at one point. And um, again, you get a lovely a lovely collection of all these singles and albums. And this is a personal favourite of mine, Vivian Stanshaw, is a hero of mine. And you probably understand where I get all my rambling from. And um, he had two albums on Charisma. Uh, one of my favourites is Teddy Boys Don't Knit, which is a great record, you should pick that up. Um, again, there's uh, some chap called Steve Hackett, and there's Peter Hamill again, Patrick Ryan's top right. And uh, some of the less known bands, you know, Rare Bird, Linda's Fun, never heard of them. Uh, the Audience, uh, not to be confused with the, the, the 1990s version. And uh, ah, the Monty Python collection, and it's uh, my, one of my favourite magazines there, Tits and Bums. Again, we all like a naked bottom, don't we? And um, and yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's um, it's packed full of really good memorabilia, you know, if you're not familiar. And there's Hawkwind, 
yeah, you forget Hawkwind were on the were on the label, and there's Stacia. She's got them out and uh, enthralling the Hawkwind fans. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And um, Brand X. Yes, we all love Brand X, don't we? And uh, and now we're talking about cricket with John Arlott. I mean, it was that's how diverse the label was. And then we get into the reggae years, and there's some Julian Lennon as well. He had one of his big hits with Charisma, which again is quite remarkable. You would never think that Julian Lennon was on that label. And then Malcolm McLaren with his uh, Rocksteady crew infused Buffalo Girls and Double Dutch. Those singles were also on the Charisma label. Again, remarkable. And there was even a racehorse. Tony Stratton Smith loved racing. And these are some of the hangouts that he used to. Uh, frequent. I'm sure I've actually had a pint in the ship. I used to think I worked around the corner from there once, or I may have dreamt it. And these, this is the entire um, catalogue of releases on the Charisma label. Again, it's uh, a veritable feast of information. And again, it's a very diverse and interesting uh, catalogue. And those are the racing colours. The racing colours from the, the jockey who used to race for Tony Stratton Smith. I love that booklet. I think it's a very special thing. Um, and let's have a look at the CDs. I'm just going to look at the uh, the front and back covers. Nothing amazing. What they've done is they worked Tony Stratton Smith's image into the uh, into the Charisma uh, Mad Hatter logo, and each one's got a different theme. And uh, oh, look! You can see me camera and my shoulder reflected in the shiny shininess of it all. Um, so that's the first disc. Here comes the the second disc. And uh, yeah, pretty cosmic stuff there. Uh, I just love the I love the graphic design and the care that's been taken with each of these designs. Um, you know, I just uh, you just don't get this now. <laughs> you know, I'm probably being old-fashioned uh, and sentimental in a way. And again, Monty Python, I love that. Don't you get squashing Tony Stratton Smith as the Mad Hatter? What more could you want? If that doesn't bring a smile to your face, then you're dead inside. And um, and the final disc, I don't know, is it is this one sacrilegious to the Rastafari? I don't know, but here he is enjoying a, a lovely big one on a cloud. Wouldn't we all love to be there? And um, again, that is probably the most diverse CD. Well, as you can see, uh, you can understand why I'm particularly fond of this box set. I really like the booklet that comes with it and the all the different sleeves of the albums that are featured on the Charisma label. I also quite like the selection of tracks inside. Uh, from one minute you've gone from um, Vivian Stanchel through to Peter Hamill to Peter Gabriel to Brand X to Patrick Moraz and then CD, the third CD is a CD which is the, the like the spoken word CD which features contributions from Monty Python, Barry Humphreys, uh, John Arlott, who likes talking cricket of course, um, and uh, Peter O'Sullivan which is, who is um, a famous racing uh, commentator. Um, I've never had the um, the strength to sell this box set on um, it, it takes up too much room I obviously I don't go to it all the time but um, I just love what's inside it's one of those one of those box sets that just oozes class I really like the uh, the graphic on the cover of the uh, the the parody of all the different rock stars and musicians who are in the who are in, who are in on the Charisma label, I like the, the fondness and the affection with which Tony Stratton Smith is remembered within the box set. For it was without him, none of those people uh, would have had a record label or you know would have had their records released. Um, and I don't think you really get box sets like this released anymore. A few years ago, there was a, a Charisma box set brought out. Uh, I think it was called Refugees, a Charisma anthology, and it was an absolute abortion. It was kind of based on this set, but the artwork looked like um, the group designer had taken a technicolored shit on a piece of paper and then put the Mad Hatter logo in the middle of it. Whereas this was just a classy piece of work and I'm surprised it's out of print. I had a little scout around on the internet and um, it's you know hard to find. I think you can get it on eBay probably for about 30 quid if you're lucky. Um, 
but you know I think it's one of those box sets that if you're a beginner you know or somebody who's looking off for a way in to those bands on the charisma label it make a, a certainly a, a good addition to your collection maybe maybe one day I'll flog it I don't know um, but there's such a good variety of music on there and it's um, it's really interesting just how diverse the charisma label was you know yeah of course you've got the standard prog stuff from Genesis and VDGG etc but you've also got um, the spoken word um, releases you know Monty Python with their comedy Peter Arlott and uh, and and it seems like you know, Tony Stratus-Smith was very much into you know, promoting those people that he was interested in. And on the last CD, um, we go reggae. There's the, lots of reggae artists and early dance music represented by Malcolm McLaren, uh, the Supreme Dream Team and the Rocksteady crew. Remember those guys? I do from my childhood. So it really shows how unique a record label is and what it can be. And unfortunately, I don't think you'll see the likes of which again. You know, this t- it's a it's a relic of the past. It's a um, a record of, of of days gone by, and that's probably why I've got a fondness for it. In fact, I always remember. Now, this is this is what anorak I am. I remember the day that uh, Tony Strat Smith died because it was actually reported in in the newspaper, and I was into Genesis at that time. And I thought, oh wow, that's pretty big because I'd seen his name. You know, name checked in various books and on the album sleeves and stuff and um, yeah Tony Stratton Smith a very important man in the world of prog so there you go thought I'd do something a bit different for you rather than blathering on about 5.1 surround sound and whatnot. Um, a box set that you may or may not have been aware of you know, I wouldn't call it a rarity maybe it is, it is or I don't know I can't be that brave because some pedant will stick his head above the parapet and say it's not rare. There's five of them in my local HMV. But um, but there you go, the famous Charisma box set. Something genuinely nice to own. And if you if it's piqued your interest, maybe you can track down a copy and own it for yourself. But wait, you've forgotten to give the famous Charisma box set a rating. Well, I'm going to give it five. Mad Hatters out of five. That's five Mad Hatters out of five. On with the show. Hope this has been of interest. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, invite your friends over for a, a wild prog review party and watch this and subscribe and do a merry dance and and whatever else is involved. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave your comments if you if you think it's like old crap. Let me know. And my name has been Darren Locke. And you've been sitting in front of the computer with your trousers round your ankles again. And it comes to say, prog on. <laughs>